Eventually, in your data science career, someone will ask you, what do you want to specialize in? It's quite a daunting question, and knowing what's best for you is quite hard to say the least. So in this video, I want to explain why you should specialize, how to pick a specialism, and how you can start going towards that goal. Let's get into it. In my opinion, you should specialize, but there's no rush in getting to that decision. You should spend at least the first two to three years getting a really, really good understanding of all the fundamentals in machine learning and data science. The things you should cover are basic statistics, linear algebra, calculus, linear and logistic regression, decision trees, random forest, gradient booster trees, and neural networks. Again, this list is non-exhaustive, but learning all these topics, particularly how to build machine learning models using things like cross-validation, parameter tuning, etc., just how to actually approach a data science problem and also a modeling problem and the best practices around that and understanding which algorithm is the best in certain situations is probably what would take you at least the first two years to really master. After you have nailed your fundamentals, it's now time to think about what you want to specialize in. The whole specialist versus generalist debate is quite old now and there's both pros and cons to being both. For a generalist, the pros are that you can work on a wide variety of projects. You could also have more job opportunities because you're not pigeonholed into one particular domain or area of expertise. You may also find that it's easier for you to go down the management track. So if you want to be head of data science, VP of data, or even CTO, then the generalist role is kind of better for that. And finally, you also find that being a generalist, you're kind of solving the more high level and mid level business problems. So you're a lot more closer to the business side than you were if you're a complete kind of specialist in one area. The cons are that in general, you get lower compensation because you're not really specific in one field. So your kind of value may be seen as lower. You will also struggle to go into the IC track. So the individual contributor, if that's something you want to do. And finally, it's harder to get into any research positions if that's something you want to do. Pros and cons for a specialist are basically just the inverse of the generalist. So the pros are that you may find you get higher compensation because you're really expert in one domain that the market finds really valuable. It's also a good way to go down the individual contributor track. That's something you want to go after. And finally, if you specialize in a particular area, chances are you probably enjoy it. So because you're going down a certain path, you're very likely to enjoy your work going forward. The cons are that your expertise in a particular field may become irrelevant in the future and may be also harder for you, depending on the job market, to find jobs because you're really niche in one area, but there may not be demand for that area in the future for all we know. To be honest, I think it's better to be a specialist than a generalist because you can go from a specialist to a generalist, but not really vice versa. Not to mention your compensation is often quite a lot higher and a lot of people do work for money, and so that's really important to mention. However, I don't recommend being a specialist in one niche area. The way I think you should approach your career is to have a T-shaped distribution of skills. So where you know the whole fundamentals really well, so that's all the basics of machine learning, statistics that I discussed earlier, and then probably knowing two to three areas in a really good depth. That way you know, like I said, everything to the fundamental level pretty good, so you can solve most generalist problems, but you have three areas where you have really deep expertise in, and that way you're quite flexible in both directions because you're not necessarily at the mercy of one area being extinct from the market, but you know multiple areas, so that way you can kind of be a bit more selective and a bit more kind of open to the positions you apply to. So we've established that it's probably best for your data science career to specialize. However, you should specialize in multiple areas so that way you hedge your, your kind of career against the market. Now, there are different ways that you can specialize. You can specialize in a particular technical domain or you can specialize in a business domain or industry. Some examples of technical domains are NLP and LLMs, computer vision, reinforcement learning, time series analysis and forecasting, recommendation systems, anomaly detection, speech recognition and processing, optimization, quantitative analysis, deep learning, bioinformatics, econometrics, geospatial analysis, customer analytics, model deployment, like a machine learning engineer, and data flow engineering. So I read this from my phone because I was never remembering all that list of like 15 technical topics. But I'm going to show you that, that there's so much areas or there's so many areas that you can really specialize in if you're interested in them. And chances are from that list, 
then something that really interests you and also really aligns with your skill set. An important thing to note is that many of these specialisms are kind of in the mercy of the industry you work in. For example, you can only really do bioinformatics at a health-based company. With this in mind, there are certain specific industries that you can specialize your career in. For example, you can have like banking and finance, insurance, supply chain, marketing, consultancy, cybersecurity, fintech, healthcare, research, oil and gas, e-commerce. What I personally recommend is that you pick three technical areas that interest you the most and three business areas that interest you the most and see if there's an overlap between them. And if there is an overlap, you have your answer. The next question is, how do you go about making sure that you do indeed specialize in this area? Well, the technical one is a bit easier because you can learn all the technical things or all the things around that technical subject in your spare time. Chances are there's some sort of roadmap video course that you can take that will tell you everything you need to know about that particular technical area. So just do some online research and I'm sure you'll find something. After you've learned the material, I would then immediately go about building a portfolio surrounding that technical specialism. So build loads of projects. Not only will this teach you a lot, but it will show employers that you're serious about pursuing a career in that area. Another option is that if you currently work as a data scientist, ask your line manager if you can work on a project with a team that is currently doing the specialism that you want to learn. You'd be surprised how easy this is and how accommodating most companies are. How to go about specializing in a particular business area is generally quite hard because the only way you really understand how business operates is by basically working for a business in that domain. So my best advice is basically apply to jobs in a particular business field you want to go into. As I said earlier, the technical and business skills will probably overlap. So your portfolio that you'll build will very likely help you in this job search. If it doesn't, then make sure you do projects surrounding that business area. You can also do some reading on the side to develop your understanding of the whole industry. For example, if you want to get into banking or finance, read the Financial Times. If you want to break into insurance, read Insurance Insider, things like that. Things that just develop your overall understanding of how the industry operates and all the latest news going on. Everything I just mentioned in this section can be summed up by just saying, make sure your learning and the way you approach your projects all line up with exactly the specialisms you want to go into. If you enjoyed this video and you want more data science advice like this, then make sure you check out my weekly newsletter, Dishing the Data. I send it every Monday morning and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check it out.